Hey, everybody, and welcome to the newest edition of Shooting the Breeze with Ben and Matt. And as the title suggests, I'm Matt, and that is Ben, and we're just here to talk to our guests just about whatever. This week, we got none other than Movie Lovers Unite himself, John DiGregorio. How are you doing, my man? I'm doing good, sir. How are you doing? I'm trying to stay warm. <laughs> I understand that. I understand. Yeah. I live where I live in Canada. It was one degree Celsius today. It sucked. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely would be uh, getting some long johns on and double wrapping myself up. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, after this is done, I'm going to turn up the heater. I'm going to lie under my blanket and watch some TV. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, every week we let the guests choose a topic. So, John, what was the topic you wanted to discuss this week? You see, you know how Netflix actually had the new Adam Sandler movie came out last month. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Ben and I was thinking to myself, you know, Adam Sandler had a lot of good movies that came out in the 90s and maybe early, little late 2000s. And I wanted to talk about the high rise and the low rise of Adam Sandler. And okay. I figured that, you know, this would be a good time to actually talk about it, especially after Who Be Halloween with the mm -hmm. shared universe that he tried to do. Really? Like I, I, have yeah. to, I haven't seen it. Yeah, he tried to do a shared universe, which is something that I always – Wanted him to try and do, but the way he did it was forced, in my opinion. Who was in it? Who was in it? What was the universe with, with one uh, of the movies? Get this. He actually had the love interest from Billy Madison, and not yeah. Billy Madison, but uh, Happy, Gilmore. Happy Gilmore in it. And was, then, it the, was it as the same character? No, different different character. Oh, okay, okay. Just had the same, act, same actress that they had. For yeah. um, Billy Matt, yeah, for Happy Gilmore, uh, they had references to the Water Boy, where he pissed all over the uh, the sheet. They had callbacks to Billy Madison. They had a bunch of other stuff in there that oh, was nice. saturated okay. with um, with stuff like that. Oh, okay. You think it's? You said it felt forced, eh? Yeah, it was just the dialogue and the way they tried mm -hmm. to go about doing it. Because you remember that little old woman that was in. Billy Madison, where uh, they're on the school field trip, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they go to there, and she goes, and I'm Miles Davis. Well, yeah, yeah. they have that little old lady in there again, and this time, <laughs> Adam goes, I made some crossword puzzles for the kids and everything for them to enjoy while they wait to get inside for the fall festival. He goes, oh, how nice. Okay. She goes, walks off, and throws it inside the trash. <laughs> <laughs> My thought is she's still alive. <laughs> I think they got another actress to play that role, but, oh, okay. she, she, but she was definitely referenced in the movie itself. Okay, because I was going to say, man, that was 25 years ago, and she was yeah. old. <laughs> she's still kicking. There's something going on. Yeah. But, yeah, um, they did a little bit of callbacks here and there, especially with – Billy Madison, I mean, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, all those old favorite classic mm -hmm. uh, Adam Sandler movies. Okay. And then I, I have to admit, I actually have not seen any of his Netflix movies, just because I guess after a certain point for me, he just kind of lost the appeal. Like, I still watch I, the ones I like, but... Right, and you see, I understand that. I totally do, because here's the thing. I'm always rooting for a <laughs> comeback for him. I'm always mm. rooting for comebacks when it comes down to actors. I'm never against an actor or anything like that. I'm always rooting for a comeback. And so I was like, so my friend Michael wanted to review this for my podcast. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend actually watched that movie with me. Okay. <laughs> so she suffered with me with this movie. Oof. But, you know, what I'm, what I'm getting at, though, is this. I feel like... With Adam Sandler movies right now, they're hit and miss. The only one that he was actually good in for dramas was Uncut Gems, which recently came out, which was really good. But, you know, it's just all I know comedies is all the most subjective and most hardest thing to actually yeah. get right because everybody's humor is different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm definitely right there with you when it comes down to the Netflix films and things like that. But I'm always going to try and check out an Adam Sandler movie because I'm always rooting for a comeback. Maybe he might actually make me laugh. Yeah. And yeah. Who Be Halloween, and he made me laugh a little bit, but not enough to where I'm saying he's back to where he needs to be at. Okay. For me. 
Yeah, it's yeah, it's been a really, really long time. Like it just seems that for a point, like he was just cashing in on what made him famous. And like that's in my opinion, kind of lazy. I agree with you, especially after Jack and Jill. Oh, I, I didn't ever I don't ever want to see that movie. That's one I purposely avoided. I saw it. And what did you think? Oh, uh, yeah, no, uh, mm. yeah, me pretty much. It's it's at the point where I'm not going to see it because it's on Tyler. I'm going to watch the trailer and see, you know, oh, if there's something right. there. Right, you know, I can see that. I have a question for you. Okay, okay. What is the last good movie? And the last, <clears throat> the last good movie with her, and the last good comedy, and the last one that made you laugh. So for me, it's uh, they're both the same answer, and it's actually the first Gro- oh, well, Okay, the last movie uh, I'd have to say Grown Ups. Like I, I did like Grown Ups too, but the first Grown Ups for me was the, his last great one. That's just my opinion, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see that though because yeah. I did laugh a lot in Grown Ups one versus yeah. Grown Ups two because Grown Ups two just felt like it was forced with the same jokes. We already know his yeah. friends are going to show up and things like that. And it just felt forced on that on that end of the spectrum as well. Yeah. It, it did have its laughs for sure, but right. it's just the first one seemed more uh, genuine. Well, it that, does. Uh, yeah. Let me be honest here. That first corner, all it really was was it was a Saturday Night Live reunion. For that sure. Chris Farley. You know how long that script's been around? Chris Farley was originally supposed to play Kevin uh, James. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, you can tell that really yeah. that and part Chris Farley. came from the following it. Yeah. What wow. happened to say? Yeah. I had no clue. Yeah. Yeah, no, just for me, like that one I connected to because I'm I'm watching it and it's like I'm not that that age yet, but I mean like watching it, I was like, oh, this is fucking me and my friends. Right. Exactly. And that's why I connected with it as well. Yeah. Because who doesn't have that friendship of playing basketball on 4-H or, for example, or whatever you're doing for your fun yeah. time, and then getting together with a group of friends to mourn somebody that you looked up to yeah. through your childhood, and then camping. Yeah, and you've always got the one friend whose balls you bust more than others, you know, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's just the way it is. Uh, it, it, no, it, it, I, uh, it's a movie I still watch quite a bit, but yeah, for me, that's the last one I'd say that was really good and made me really laugh. Still does. Right. What about you? Let's see. For me, I'm going to have to go with, let's see, probably I would go with, I'm going to go on ahead and go on with my uh, top 10 real quick. Okay. The one that I'll made me. Top five afterwards. Yeah. My, here's the thing. When I looked at it, I was looking at the spectrum of the meter of how much I laughed at something. Mm, so okay. I'm going to have to go with click. For oh, just yeah. for something that was recent that actually added some dramatic chops to it, for sure it showed that he can actually do some dramatic roles. Don't get, don't get me wrong, he did Punch Drunk Love, which I didn't really care for because I felt like at that time I was at the age where I only knew him as comedy, not as something mm-hmm. that was dramatic. So I felt like he was kind of forcing himself into the dramatic realm whenever he was should just stuck with comedies. Now I'm on the other end of the spectrum where I feel like. He needs to go on ahead, take a break from comedy for a little bit, and get into more dramatic roles. Because he's nailing the dramatic stuff. Oh, for sure. When he puts his mind to it, yeah, he's definitely plays emotion. Like, on the movie Click, I only saw it the one time, but I will say the third act where mm. it kind of starts getting dramatic, so A, surprised me, and B, impressed me. Yeah. Right. I don't, I, don't, I don't like Rain Over Me. Right. That's a good one, too. Mm. That was a really good one. Yeah. Also, too, Wedding Singer is also one of my favorites. Yeah, um, that's that's that. that's pretty high up on my list. Um, on my list, that's my number three, probably all of his all time. <laughs> yeah, mine too, babe. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I have to say, uh, Wedding Singer was really good. I actually own both soundtracks of the Wedding Singer. Oh yeah, Be- and on top of that, I bought it because of the Adam Sandler uh thing of somebody kill me. <laughs> you know, I actually yeah. bought that at Blockbuster. <laughs> you know what? I really Blockbuster. wish they had put on those soundtracks. I really wish they'd put his version of um, "Love Stinks" by the Jay Giles Band. I agree. Yeah, I love. I love this <laughs> mm. for sure. 
Um, but for my number one, I actually have 50 First Dates. Oh, you know what? Up until Grown Ups, that was my number one. Really? Yeah. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Like, yeah, he's kind of a sleaze in it, but he, it's a, right. he's a sleaze with heart. Okay. Exactly. Because, you know, he's trying to pick up on this girl that has short-term memory loss and everything. Yeah. And my favorite thing is the guy, the father, he, whenever uh, she discovers that, you know, she's no longer at that uh, year anymore or anything like that. And, of course, you know, he goes, oh, ha she goes, happy birthday, daddy. He goes, yeah. After, yeah, you're like 100 now. <laughs> yeah, that would suck having to constantly play that right. over and over again. Like it would great on you. My honestly, one of my favorite parts of the movie is Rob Snyder. I think that's his his best work. Is in that I movie. agree. Oh, are you kidding me? When he gets hit, when he gets hit with the crowbar, and he's like, "Oh, you crazy bitch!" <laughs> Running into the woods, <laughs> and then he starts licking the uh, mermaid, boob, the boob, and everything yeah. too. And yeah. Then the shark part makes me laugh, though. Oh fuck! With the yeah, bleeding into the oceans like yeah. <laughs> they only bite you when when uh, you touch their private parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for Rob Snyder, for me, it's that one and Grown Ups as its two best roles for me. I can see that. I can definitely yeah. see that. Yeah. What about yeah, for you, Ben? Yeah. Oh, go on. oh no, I was go ahead. Okay. Um, my, I think. Mean... No, that is one that really worked well and made me mad that I thought it was a really good, great movie. I think it goes all the way back to Big Daddy. Yes. And I mean, I thought had a lot of that. Well, forget about um, 50 Fifty Stage. Rob Shadow was fucking hilarious in that. And then the movie, man. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's been it's been a minute since I've seen Big Daddy. Yeah, hip hop, hip hop, apotemus. Daniel yeah. gave him the easy one. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was to me. That's the movie where you could see Adam Sandler actually can act. Right, right. Yeah, because especially whenever the kid gets taken away and the oh, kid's hurt. He goes, I can wipe my own ass. I can oh. wipe my own ass. And Adam Sandler's just about to break down. And he goes, I know. <laughs> and that shows you right there. He touched a little bit of the dramatic side on that. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. It showed you what he can do. Yeah. No, I 100%. That was definitely the beginning of that. Because, that, yeah, that was before Punch Rock Love and, uh, yeah. and uh, Raider Mean stuff, right? Yeah. That was before that. Yeah. And, um, I was gonna say an un uh, underrated one, like it's not in my top 10 or anything, but Mr. Deeds is pretty underrated, yeah. Good one, yeah, especially when he's when he stabs John Totoro or when John Totoro stabs him in the foot and he screams, like, ah, I'm just kidding, <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that? Why would you do that? I'm just messing with you, pal. <laughs> yeah. oh. And then also, too, another funny part on Mr. Deeds is the funeral scene with his uncle. When he pops out of the uh, coffin, because he goes, Christ. <laughs> he goes in, in my town, we're sh we're actually shown the body. It helps with the grieving process. It opens it up. <laughs> Al Sharpton is about to have a heart attack, oh, <laughs> and then that that's okay, buddy, I, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Uncle. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm gonna. I'll take good care of your company. Okay. Watch your <laughs> yeah. <arm. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what about the movie uh, Eight Crazy Nights? What are you guys' thoughts on that? I never seen that. I You're never, not really? I never, I never, that's, that's a Christmas watch every year for me. Really? really? Oh, yeah. I could see that being Canada. I could definitely see that being a Canadian movie. Hands down, yeah. No, that, that, that movie is... It's got... It's pretty good for a raunchy animated movie. It's got a lot of quotable lines. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot of quotable characters. The one guy with the hook for his hand who always makes a mistake of wiping his ass with that one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is triple nipple. <laughs> <laughs> then also, too, um, I actually owned the soundtrack to that one, though, too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I owned sure. the soundtrack to Crazy Nights, and I also have the movie. Oh, man. Yeah, the music in that, that's an underrated musical. It's, 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 the numbers, oh, for sure. 
It really is, especially when he does the uh, sequel to the songs for the Hanukkah song. Yeah. Oh, the Hanukkah <laughs> songs, of course. Right. Or uh, what's what's the song that they freaking? Uh, oh God, at the banquet when they're uh, when he convinces them to give Whitey the award. Oh yeah, I can't remember yeah. though. I mean, um, it's been a long time. and then like the Asian guy gets in there. The Asian guy played by Rob Schneider, who's half Asian, so it's not whitewashing. <laughs> exactly. Is he half Asian? He's uh, yeah, he's Asian Filipino. Yeah, even Rob actually talks about that in his stand up on Netflix. Yeah. He goes, yeah, just chill out. Name of his specials or something like that. Yeah, he, as a matter of fact, he actually says that in the audience. He goes, just chill out, people. Okay, I'm not whitewashing. I'm half Asian and half Filipino. So don't worry. And I also have a Mexican wife as well. So I'm all the above. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I really have to say that was actually a good pick from you for uh, A Crazy Nights. It is really underrated. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember a few scenes from that, but not enough because I haven't seen it in such a long time. Yeah. I, watch I, like I, said, I watch it every Christmas. <laughs> I remember the mall, though. Whenever the old oh. man loves going to the mall. <laughs> yeah. And then the, yeah, the song where uh, where all the logos come to life and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Ben, I really recommend you do watch it. It is really good. It's not long too. It's like under an hour and a half. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's definitely got some of his, some of his best um, his best stuff. What do you guys think of um, the one who never came in change? Um, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Yeah, that one. I saw it the one time and it was pretty forgettable for me. You see, I saw I saw it a couple of times. I saw it one time in theaters. I actually owned the DVD because I I was a big huge Adam Sandler fan. So of course, every single time whenever something made me laugh of his or whatever, I would wind up taking it home and owning it. Mm -hmm. But you know, for me, I would actually put it on if I wanted something for background noise or something like that. There were a few little scenes here and there where I actually chuckled, like when he winds up saying, "Look, I can't be gay, but I can be a lesbian for you." <laughs> <laughs> I can do that for you, and then, and then I love Kevin James when he goes. Well, gives him the scenario of his kids starving to death in Bangladesh and knocking on the door. He goes, "Imagine this: my kids starving to death, and they have nowhere to go because their dad passed away, and the only place they can go to is your your place, and they're tapping on your window." He goes, "Why would they be living in Bangladesh?" <laughs> that was the only thing that he said and everything because he didn't capture anything else that he said. Ugh, so, I, I might even watch rewatch that movie. Uh, the Water Boy. The Water Boy. That's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> it's a high quality H2O. <laughs> and that's what I call high quality H2O. Coach Klein said yeah. I could. Coach Klein said I could. <laughs> yeah. What mama don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when he pulls oh, down the pants and shows the uh, Roy Orbison tattoo. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah, then, that was uh, in my teenage years. That one was like a must watch. Same here. I remember going to school and everybody was talking about that movie. Then again, I live in the South, live near the Louisiana, Louisiana and all that stuff. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's very popular down here. Would you say that that is peak Adam Sandler? Oh, most definitely peak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, after the what was after water? But what was after that one? That's a good I think question. Now, I think, like I know you had fifty first dates afterwards. That was in uh, two thousand four or two thousand five with uh, fifty first dates. Two thousand four was fifty first dates. Okay, so yeah, after Water Boy, you had Big Daddy, and then Little Nicky, which was atrocious. Mm -hmm. I think that was the first bad one. But, uh, good. I I'd did agree. like the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'd agree. Little Nicky was his first bad one. Then he got Mr. Deeds, Eight Crazy Nights, and then oh, Anger Management. I have that on my list. As that, one of the two. that is an underrated movie. Him and Jack Nicholson. That one I have not seen. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh I man, we have to. Never watched it. And John C. Riley has a really funny cameo in it. Oh, well, he's always funny. Yeah, but you know, I, you know, this is actually after the nine eleven stuff and things like that. So he gets kicked off of an airplane, mm -hmm. and 
He's, he goes, sir, calm down. We're going through a very critical time in our life right now. And you just need, he goes, I'm calm. I'm calm down and everything. I'm perfectly fine. I'm just trying to get some headphones so I can watch the movie with this gentleman here, which is Jack Nicholson that he's sitting next to. He goes, I'm perfectly fine, sir. Calm down. I'm calm. Next thing you know it, he gets tased and gets kicked off the airplane. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, and then of course, Jack Nicholson winds up being his anger management therapist because yeah. the judge actually sentenced him to anger management. And the stuff that Buddy Rydell puts him through, oh my God. That's like his older bully is a Buddhist. <laughs> the kid that used to bully him is a Buddhist. He winds up beating the hell out of his uh, but uh, out of his bully as a Buddhist. <laughs> Oof. Who and plays Not John C. Riley. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So they go on a road trip to try. He goes, you know what you need to do? You need to make up with your bully. That would actually help you with your whole entire uh your whole entire persona. You need to make up with him. Don't you think it's time? And he goes, I don't want to meet him. And he's still afraid of him, even in his, as an adult. He goes, no, nah, I'm good. He goes, no, nah, <laughs> we're going on a road trip. So they go on a road trip. He's a Buddhist. And he goes, look, I am so sorry, which is John C. Riley's part in the film. Okay. He's, the he's the bully who's the Buddhist. And he goes, I am so sorry that I hurt you. I did not mean to hurt you. I apologize for everything I did. And then Jack Nicholson goes, well, don't you have something that you want to tell him too? Like, for instance, how you used to try and make Whoopi with his sister and tell him that and that she used to have uh, ghosts in her clothes? And he goes, you did what? <laughs> Next thing you know, it, John C. Riley wants to go on ahead and beat the hell out of him. Before you know, you have Adam Sandler and John C. Riley fighting each other. Nice. Okay, I think I have to go check this out. I think it's on Netflix up here. I think so. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, the other one I got is Happy Gilmore. Oh, of course. Gilmore. That's yeah. Okay, which for you is it? Is it Billy Madison or is it Happy Gilmore? For me, it'll always be Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore because I'm a hockey fan. Okay. <laughs> and I can relate to Adam Sandler, especially whenever he goes in the batting cage. He goes, only six more months until hockey season starts. I got to toughen up. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's your home. Go back to your home. <laughs> the 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 long, <laughs> I have to admit, like I'm, I'm an avid golfer, and every time one of my friends goes to the putt, I go, "It's all in the hips." <laughs> oh hell yeah! <laughs> I did not yeah, know that you were a golfer, though. Yeah, no, I, I I do love to golf. You can actually see my golf okay. clubs in the background over okay. there. Um, I have, like the last years, I haven't gone out as much as I would like, but yeah, I love to golf. Okay. Um, I, I think that movie might have had something to do with it, to be honest. That's what, that's pretty cool though. That actually inspired you to want to actually yeah. go golfing and yeah. everything. And that's easily one of his most quotable movies too. Right. Yeah. I also like the goofy pants part bit that he actually talked about and. Uh, his, the coach is like, I'm so glad that you dressed up for this. If I have to dress up in those goofy ass pants, I'll actually have to kill my own self. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget the amazing cameo by Ben Stiller. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. As how the the uh, the nursing home guy did. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, he's actually in Who Be Halloween as that oh. character. No, he plays Hal. Yeah, at, the, at the very beginning, he's actually that character. That's hilarious. And he's yeah, actually I'm not going back and watching that one scene. Yeah, yeah. Me, me too. At the very beginning, that's it. You only see him one time in that whole entire thing, and that's it. Wow. The, the th like one of my best friends, the thing that makes him laugh the most from Happy Gilmore is uh, Jackass! <laughs> Jackass! <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> the price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that scene was that scene. That scene is iconic. And um, oh god, what's his name? Uh, Christopher McDonald. He's in um, Mr. Iglesias, uh, Gabriel Iglesias' TV show, and he uh, the character he plays is the high school uh, gym coach, but he okay. does the Shirley Gavin thing. Yeah, yeah. 
I like it whenever he goes, um, I'm going to make shit out of clay. I may lay by the bay. <laughs> Yeah. I love that whole entire bit. For breakfast. You eat shit for breakfast? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because of that movie, I wanted to actually get an ACDC shirt because he actually had one. So I'm like, nice. yeah, I always liked ACDC, but I'm like, I need to get an ACDC shirt now. <laughs> for me, it was Kiss. So, like, I'm a big Kiss fan. And it, 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 I like, I didn't become a Kiss fan two years later, but it's, yeah, to see Gene, the Gene Simmons thing in there is always pretty cool. They weren't fun. Um, at the beginning of the movie, when they're doing the home videos, uh, what he they, they, oh, right, 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 right. and then it's in one of his nightmare flashbacks. She becomes Gene Simmons. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. that now. Yeah. yeah, because she winds up making out with Shooter, doesn't she? With the, uh, nice the yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's let's not forget the beginning of the movie with when he's singing into the into the. Oh, uh, Thing and uh, the Asian woman oh, answers. And the next yeah. rolls in. <laughs> the next morning, he's like, I, "I gotta go, but I made you breakfast." <laughs> <laughs> I want to kiss you all. The way. Guys, <laughs> and then, wait, guys, we don't talk. When I finish all that, in the movie, I pass out from laughing so hard. You're kidding? No, your family took you to see that in the theater. Yeah, yeah, when did it come out? Like, 1994, like, 95, you would have been seven or eight. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> My uncle introduced that to me in home video. You see, I was introduced to that on home video because my mom goes, I'm not seeing that stupid ass movie. That's <laughs> That was the first yeah. thing that she said. Well, my thing was my, I didn't go to the theater a lot back then. So for me, all my stuff was on home video. And my, my okay. uncle, is one of my biggest influences on my tastes. Yeah, he brought it up to my grandma's one night and we watched it. And I fucking died. That and Tommy Boy are, are, are two from that era where just I, I still watch all the time. It's Tommy Boy is in my top three. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan that Adam Sandler and Chris probably never made a movie just on two of them. Oh, that, that you imagine if cool. Adam Sandler, David Spade, and Chris Farley in their prime? Oh. You never had any night live. That is uh, yeah. definitive. Right and like, don't get me wrong, like Adam Sandler and Chris Farley have been in movies before. Right. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it would have been nice to have a starring, something starring with them. I mean, right. It could be like the Kevin James. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would have been great to see, like him to have lived long enough to do that role. I think that would have been fun. I don't find you with Chris Farley in Billy Madison as a bus driver. Yeah, yep. <laughs> with the penguins. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> The penguin yeah, thing always makes me laugh. Over the chair, you're like, ow! <laughs> oh, actually, what's going on here? You and the penguin. Oh, oh, hoo -hoo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Matt, yeah, yeah, you know this. I love that song with a victory song. In oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What song was it? The uh, Billy Madison victory song. When, oh, yeah. Okay, when, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's actually Josh McCuga and Perry Nemiroff, Nemiroff actually did that yeah, 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 yeah. for Smo, uh, Smo, uh, Smodown. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah, that was actually one of my favorites. And then I remember whenever Veronica is trying to quiz him. I had a fucking crush on her when I was a kid. Me too. I love you in Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah, you? for sure. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Veronica, I just remember so hot. Want to grab the honey? <laughs> yeah, that that song, that movie introduced me to the strut, uh, the song that plays when he hit, goes to high school. Oh yeah, which I remember because she's like, all I can think of is the music video, and you have to see the music video. It's you see all of that singer on display. Um, no, I was going to say back to Chris Farley for a second. Have you ever heard the original Shrek recordings with him? Yeah. Yeah, he was originally cast as Shrek, and then he passed away, and they re-recorded everything with Mike Myers. So Damn. if you if you type in Chris Farley Shrek, you can actually listen to the original recording. It oh, it would have oh, been. Oh, a I'm saying, I'm saying, I don't think it as good as Mike Myers. No, it no, it would have been a totally different movie. Uh, I mean, yeah, the energy yeah. that he would have actually brought into Shrek yeah. with that character would have been different. Yeah, for sure. Like, the, 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 scenes are, the, the scenes you can watch are more serious stuff. 
So, I mean, you don't get the outlandish mm-hmm. Shrek that we see in the movie, but yeah, it's really different. Right, because I, I'm picturing more of an energetic uh, Shrek because mm-hmm. he probably was a big guy, but he was also energetic. He was all over the place. Oh, that Especially was personally... Right. <laughs> because if you look... Well, yeah, that's true. But if you look at, like, Beverly Hills Ninja and stuff like that, and Tommy oh. Boy, he was just, like, all over the place. His energy was electric. Yeah, so like I said, Tommy Boy is my number three all-time favorite movie. Uh, I can see that. Oh, I love I love that movie to death. Big man in a little coat. <laughs> oh, man, guy a little coat. Or uh, he, who was um? Oh God, what's David Spade's character's name again? Richard. Richard. Yeah. Hey, Richard. Who's your favorite little rascal? Alfalfa or Spanky? <laughs> he sinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that is so <laughs> or or my favorite we, 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 what was it we uh we made all the deals he's like drops the blanket he's like richard hold me and he's like yikes <laughs> <laughs> I, I like when they were in the meeting and chris foley started to do the um, thing with a little car and he oh, like, god. Oh yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "Nanny, I have to go to the bathroom." No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I meet someone strange, I always look at somebody else. I'm like, I wonder if he grew up under paint lines, under power lines, <laughs> or uh, or in this classic line, a lot of people go to college for seven years. Yeah, they're called doctors. <laughs> Shut up, Rich. Yes. <laughs> How about Rob Lowe in that movie? Rod Lowe's great. Oh, God. Rod Lowe is a villain? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was my first introduction to Rod Lowe. My too. Yeah. Let's see here. Another every, thing, every, every time, I, One more thing from Tommy Boy. Every yeah. time I uh, I do something really, really stupid, I'm just like, I'm retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, too. I'm like, at work, yeah. I'm also like, why did you do that? I said, I'm sorry. I'm retarded. I'm I don't retarded. know better. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, but, I know that word is not politically correct nowadays, but I mean it's still right. a funny line. You're having a little time. I'm making fun of myself. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> but another thing, though, too, is I remember uh, when I was used to work in housekeeping at the nursing home, I banged into <laughs> the wall with my garbage cart, and they looked at me. I said, "I'm sorry, I was trying to go to Hogwarts." <laughs> Because, because of the fact when Harry Potter has to go to Hogwarts for nine and three quarters to get on yeah. the train, he has to go through a wall. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. I banged my card into the wall, they looked at me and they're like, what are you doing? I said, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go to Hogwarts. Nice. So they, apparently I'm a muggle still. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> that must have got a pretty big laugh or a pretty weird look at uh, look from them. Some of them got it, some of them didn't. I'm like, well, nice. I tried. Tough crowd. I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retarded. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but another thing though too is I like the longest yard. Yes, I was going to bring that up. A lot of people shit on that movie. That movie is hysterical, and really is. Oh yeah. Because I love it when he steals his girlfriend's car. Yeah. Because I better not get one scratch on it. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then also to the cops that ar- that arrest him. The one guy was really short with big ears and everything. He goes, oh, and you must be Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what was some of the uh, standout stuff for y'all though? Well, in the longest yard, actually, one of my standouts is Chris Rock's line when he's trying to pep them up. Is like, who are we gonna beat? The guards. Who are we gonna kill? The guards. Who are we gonna kiss? The guards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the guy's like, "Damn it!" <laughs> yeah, or uh, when they slip Kevin Nash the um, was it the hormones, and he complains about his nipples being sensitive. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, yeah no, it's uh, that movie. It's fortunate that a lot of people shit on it because it is really good. I want to write the version on it. It, 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 it does. Especially when you have Bill Goldberg in there, and they're talking about oh, yeah. the size of his penis, though, too. Yeah, the hammer. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, another thing, though, too, I liked was uh, the McDonald's reference, where he goes, "Cheeseburger, Eddie." Tell your girlfriend yes. Her comments are popping up. <laughs> yes, baby. 
<laughs> your comments are <laughs> popping up. <laughs> but I like Cheeseburger Eddie. He was my favorite. Yeah. He goes, I can get you anything, anything you want. I yeah, got that was my first introduction to him, to Terry Crews. A lot of that yeah. movie was my first introduction to a lot of those people. Outside of the wrestlers. I agree. Yeah. Because that's how I got introduced to Terry Crews was through that movie. And the t- comedic timing with him on there was really good. Yeah, it wasn't uh, – what was the f- there was a football player in that movie? Was it T.O.? Yeah, T.O. was in that movie. I actually know a nurse that is a T.O. fan at my mm-hmm. workplace. And she goes, I'm a huge T.O. fan. I said, You're probably the only one that shows up to the games wearing his jersey. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, he was pretty controversial. Like, I'm not a football like, fan, I, I know his legacy, but I always bust her balls though. She goes, Shut up, I like T.O. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> I like Tom Brady, but you know, that's another story. She goes, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> so, but still, I mean, I like that film for what it is. It was a great remake. Mm-hmm. It also explained a lot more compared to what the strongest yard was in the 1970s. I feel like I, that they did a lot better with it. I still haven't seen that one. I still haven't okay. seen it. Here I'm trivia for you. You know, you know, uh, I forgot his name. But the big guy in Happy Gilmore? Yeah, yeah, Richard Keel. Yeah, he's in there. Yeah. I know. He, he, he's in the original Longest Yard. I believe it. Huh. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's Jaws Once from. Again, uh, shit. Well, he was. He was Jaws. Yeah. Once again, Ben, you'll kick my ass at trivia. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> hey, man, when it comes to quotes, I think you have us all beat because the amount of quotes yeah. that you've been spewing, man. Yeah. <laughs> And also, too, I think I'm pretty good with uh, timelines as well for release dates. Yeah. Whenever I place them in certain places. It's just something about me. If something happened on a certain event, if I want and everything, I know how to place a movie in that current event because it's something that might have actually happened to me at that time. So mm-hmm. that's actually how I place it. Okay. So, yeah. That's actually good Okay, so back so, to the topic at hand, do you, without looking, do you guys know what Adam Sandler's very first movie was? Man Over Bulletproof, right? Not, not, no, 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 it wasn't Bulletproof. And you're close. You're close, John. What, what is it? It's a movie called Going Overboard, and his character's name was yeah. Shaky Moskowitz. Okay, so I was close with the title. I couldn't remember. I was paraphrasing. And that so. was before SNL, 1989. Damn, that's well, amazing. You know, you know what show he had no recurring part on, right? No, I didn't realize he was on that show. He was on the Cosby show. Oh, yeah, he is right here. Played Snitty. Oh, wow. As, um, I forget the son's name, but he was one of the son's friends. Yeah, yeah, his and, character's name is Smitty, yeah. yeah. Did you guys ever see Airheads? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, think that was, that. I think that was his first mainstream movie. That was Brandon Fraser, right? Yeah, and Steve Buscemi. Yeah, yep. yep. Matter of fact, I <laughs> love that film. Matter of fact, I would actually put that on my list, even though it's a combination of all of them. Yeah, it is it, it is a really good movie. <laughs> O'Doyle rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I okay. swear that popped up in another one of his movies. Yeah, and then um Rick. I mean was it? it? I believe. Hmm. What movie? The uh, name kid. Okay. I believe. Okay. Oh yeah. Another thing is, O'Doyles are actually in Who Be Halloween. No, no. no way. <laughs> yeah, they actually have a reference to O'Doyle. They survived the crash, eh? <laughs> or it could be another sister or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> another family like member. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you guys a question. Um. Oh, Steve Buscemi. What's your favorite Steve Buscemi character in an Adam Sandler movie? Oh, fuck. <coughs> well, there's two that always pop to mind. One is his character in Grown Ups. Mm-hmm. And B mm-hmm. is uh, his character in Billy Madison. And Mr. Yeah. D as well. Yeah, yeah, Mr. D's because of the cross size, but for some reason, yeah. him as the uh, him as the, the, the sniper in Billy Madison where he like it hangs up and he goes, he lies back. And yeah, like, yeah, like, like, yeah, cool. like, yeah. That always stood out to me. I like him in uh, Mick Nanny as a homeless guy. I, you know, it's been so long since I've seen that. I don't remember yeah. 
a lot of the cameos, any of the cameos, to be honest. Yeah, I remember that one, Ben, because remember Adam was talking about, oh, I remember when I was your age, all we had was just the, uh, what was the hamburger that they actually had back then? Uh, I didn't even know they had hamburger. Uh, yeah. I know, maybe yeah. Burnham County? Maybe Burnham County? Yeah, he actually mentions all I had, all they, all we had was just the hamburger and that's it. Now you guys have a full course meal. You guys have a happy meal. And you guys have the breakfast menu. <laughs> you okay. should be you should be special. And you know what though? I used to reenact this one scene with Big Daddy and on the school bus when someone would actually be loud, I was like, ha ha, ha shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then even in the cafeteria with the fries with Big Daddy. He, uh, where he goes, I don't, I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming. I didn't know. And I throw somebody's fries on the floor because they were being a total douchebag to somebody else. They were picking on somebody. So I was like, yeah. and he goes, did you see what I did to that kid? I totally messed that kid's mail up. I said, no, I didn't. I didn't see how you messed that up. And I just went on ahead and threw his fries on the floor. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> And the principal goes, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm sorry. I had an Adam Sandler moment. I said, and how long were you suspended? <laughs> uh, I got maybe three demerits and a day of detention. <laughs> oh, okay. You got off light. Yep. <laughs> because he Did saw he what I was doing. I was standing up for a, someone that was getting oh. picked on. So he didn't go really hard on me. <laughs> Fair enough. I went to Catholic school, so I don't think any of that stuff would have played. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't have no. played at all. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> but uh, another thing, though, too, that I want to talk about was, was Bulletproof, because that's underrated. Nobody really never, talked about Another one I've never seen. Have you seen that one, Ben? No. I okay. It is a good movie. It's got Marlon Wayans in it. Yeah. And, of course, it has Adam Sandler. Damon Wayans. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Damon. It's Damon Wayans. Yeah, Damon Wayans. I mean... Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to reboot the movie. Um, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but it had them in it, and the comedic time in between them actually worked. And basically, he's investigating Adam Sandler. He's undercover. And, you know, the cop, this cop winds up um, pulling them over because of the fact there was a stolen car that they stole. There was a car that they stole that was a sports car. Yeah. And the cop pulls him over. He goes, where are you trying to t uh, take him to? And, of course, Adam Sandler's trying to pretend that he has a speech impediment problem or whatever. And he goes, Disneyland. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I'm trying to take him to Disneyland. And the cop just lets him go. But then you find out later on that he's just an undercover cop. Nice. And then, of course, some incident happens where uh, Damon's character winds up getting sh accidentally shot by Adam Sandler because – of the fact that he had the gun in his hand pointing at Damon, and then a crane winds up uh, crashing into him and makes him accidentally shoot him. So now he has beef with Adam Sandler after he wakes up out of a coma where he actually has to start re -walk walking all over again and yeah. things like that. And now he's after Adam Sandler and nice. has to try and arrest him. But my funny, the funniest thing is this. When, they, when they're actually in this hotel room, they only have it's this little small hole-in-the-wall cheap trailer park of a uh, hotel that you wouldn't even bring anybody to. And mm -hmm. the guy goes, all we have is just the honeymoon suite. And he goes, we'll take it because I have to take him into custody tomorrow. So, <laughs> and it has a little heart shaped uh, bathtub, very cheesy hotel. And at that point, Adam Sandler's taking a shower and he's singing I Will Always Love You by uh, Whitney Houston. <laughs> and he looks at Damon. He goes, I, you'll always be my bodyguard. <laughs> but it is a good movie. It's underrated. It doesn't get a lot of love, but yeah. if you're looking for something different, something a little action and everything with a little bit of comedy, I'd recommend it. Okay. Yeah, it's very weird. I'm Sandler in action. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. The more disappointing Adam Sandler movie to me, Pixels. That couldn't have been so good. Sorry, which movie? Pixels. Oh, I, I never saw it. I did. I saw that yeah. one. 
Then Green Man. That's the same run. <laughs> Say that again, Ben. And Green Man was so good, and the Minute Gun. You see, I actually enjoyed that one a little bit. I actually really? had a little bit of a good time. Yeah, I actually had a good little bit of a good time with it as a gamer and stuff like that, and the references and the cheat codes with the old arcade video games and stuff like mm. that. I got a little bit of the appreciation over it with the nostalgia factor and everything. Did it have a lot of laughs in it? Not really, but I was still engaged into the movie enough to where I where I. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. I was like, okay, it's good for background noise if I'm trying to do something. But okay. it's not like a five out of five. <laughs> yeah, it, it was never a movie I was interested in, to be honest. Okay. I can understand that. Yeah. Um, is there any Adam Sandler cameos that you really like? Because he has appeared in, as in cameos in other movies. For me, what? it's in, it's the hot chick. When he appears as the weed guy, he's like, you could put your weed in there. <laughs> That's actually my favorite one. Because, and also, too, when he's banging on the drum set. Yeah. Goes, oh, I'm sorry. I did not know that you could hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then also, too, when he goes to the stripper, he goes, That's pretty nice. But with you, keep your weed, though. And then he tells him, he goes, Oh, I don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I will say Rob Schneider's solo movies were not that great, but that is the best no, one. Not check. I agree, but not... the animal. Mm. Uh, I haven't seen that one in a long time, but the hot chick's pretty funny, right? I'm not in his cameo in um, Judy Deeds, the No McDonald's movie, where he brings a devil. In which movie? New Deeds. No, what? not. Oh, we played Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What movie yeah, was that? was really early in his career. It's a movie, the movie Dirty Work. It's um, Norm MacDonald. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. It's you know been a long Do you know I'm actually, I'm on his IMDb, so that's how I knew about it. Oh, okay. I think I rented it when I was younger. I just, I just don't remember it. It's really you underrated know? as a film. Yeah, but I remember that movie though. Isn't that when they actually get laid off from work and they're trying to basically get even with their boss or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's essentially to get into the revenge for higher business. Right. You went by Mom said it. <laughs> That's right. I think it's one of his only movies he's ever directed. That and Hot I believe. Mean, <laughs> No, he didn't direct that. No, that was someone else. Um, yeah, no, he did dirty work and then he did a couple episodes of TV, but that was about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh there's also another thing I want to actually mention though, too. Like I like the animal of uh, Rob Schneider with the cameo of Adam Sandler doing the Rob Schneider bit. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can do it. I actually send that out to my friends as motivation when they're about to have a test in college or whatever. I'm like, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, that is you can do it all night long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went that extra mile. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I actually do that to my girlfriend's kid whenever he's on the uh, slide. And he's just yeah. looking at me. I'm like, you can do it. Slide. <laughs> <laughs> he just probably looks at you like what is wrong with this guy <laughs> right <laughs> but another thing though too I'm going to go into a little bit of his dramatics now Okay, where he added some comedy in with some of his dramatics and that is Spang Spanglish yes I've heard I, I haven't I'm going to not I'm going to admit I actually haven't seen any of his dramatic stuff but I've heard really good things about it about his, his dramatic what about for you Ben did you see that one no Okay. You see, this is why I love doing these lists because I like introducing people to new films, mm -hmm. especially underrated films. And that's also why I do top 10 lists on my podcast. Yeah. But uh, basically, you have Adam Sandler, who is a chef, who is married to Tia Liani. Mm -hmm. And they're rich and they want to actually hire somebody that can actually do housekeeping and stuff like that. So they hire this Latino family, uh, the mother and daughter. She goes to the private, the uh, matter of fact, the daughter winds up going to the same private school that Adam Sandler's daughter goes to and everything. And they wind up bonding and becoming friends. Mm -hmm. But Adam Sandler's uh, whole entire thing is in disarray. His marriage is in dis 
uh, disarray and everything. They're miserable and things like that. They're rich, but they're miserable with each other. And you can actually mm -hmm. tell that their marriage is in trouble. You can definitely tell there's just nothing there. And, you know, basically Adam Sandler's a chef and everything, and he's a top-notch uh, chef in California, I believe, in this movie. Okay. And seeing, and seeing him cook, seeing him have that love and desire to make something actually makes me believe that he's actually a chef. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, it's, and also, too, he has a little bit of humor into it, but there's a lot of dramatic stuff with it. And also, too, he starts falling for the Latina woman, his housekeeper, oh. as well. And also, too, because his marriage is in shambles and everything, because of the way uh, Tia is actually treating him, is because she's always yelling at him, always being disrespectful towards him. When Adam Sandler's just this quiet, polite person that just takes everything and tries to work things out in an, an adult way, Tia, on the other hand, is just a loose cannon, basically. Mm. So if you're looking for something a little bit different with your Adam Sandler, I recommend that one. Okay. And another underrated film is Rain Over Me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, that one I I have somewhere up here. When my dad's when my friend when my friend's dad retired, he got into this thing about burning movies, and I ended up with a bunch of them, and that's one of them. <laughs> Great movie. Great movie. Yeah. That's the one where he plays the guy who lost everything in 9-11, yeah. right? Yep. And um what is his name? From the MCU is in it. Um uh, Don but my favorite part in that movie was when he comes out, uh, knocks on Don Cheadle's door, and goes, "Hey, can you come out and hang out?" He goes, "I I don't know. I have to ask my wife." And he looks at him and goes, "Well, can he?" <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It is. It really is. And, you know, it just shows the dramaticness of Adam Sandler in that courtroom. He carried his own. He was able to show that dramatic thing, especially whenever he talks about how he sees his wife's face on everybody that he actually encounters, and including his kids. And he goes, I see them every day. Every day it, I wake up and, and I look in the mirror or if I'm walking down the street, I see the look on my kid's face. I see my kids. I see my wife. And everything you want to talk about pain, you want to talk about how I don't know anything. I'm in pain every day, basically, is what he's saying. I'm just paraphrasing a couple of the quotes, mm -hmm. but that's basically what why I like this movie is because of the fact of the fact that he can actually pull us into that kind of realm. Mm -hmm. And I then watch, watch that one too. That's another one I'm gonna have to add to my list. It's really good. And then, of course, yeah. Uncut Gems that just came out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you, everything this guy is doing is his own damn fault. <laughs> he's screwing oh, up. That's what I've heard, yeah. Like, he's this jeweler, this con artist. And a matter of fact, uh, the guy from the Celtics, uh, he used to play for the Celtics and everything. Barnett, right? Yeah, Barnett. He's in it. And he goes, look, I have to have this gym. He goes, no, man, it's very rare and everything. You do not want this. Here, you want this? This this is good. He goes, I do not want a Furby on a chain. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> and he owes bookies money, mob mobster mo mo uh, money and everything. And when he gets the money, get this, he actually has a way of actually getting money. And he, what does he do? He bets on, on, on basketball teams and sports and does a bunch of off-the-wall shit. And I'm like, okay, it's your own fault because you're being yeah. stupid. At yeah. this point, and he's also dragging his girlfriend into it, and his own family, his ex girl, his ex wife into it, and stuff like that. So, you know that this movie is really good. It doesn't have any funny parts in it or anything like that. This movie is serious. This movie takes itself seriously. Does he deserve an Academy Award for this at that time? Because remember, he said that he actually got botched because he wasn't nominated. Remember. Yeah, I remember, yeah. And then he came my out with movie Halloween or whatever, yeah. Right. And my honor don't for me, I'll make the worst movie ever. <laughs> right. But if see me Halloween. I think it was, right. yeah. But in my honest opinion, 
His movie did not, Uncut Gems did not deserve an Academy Award. There were so many other movies that actually tops it. It's just like being in the World Series. You're always going to end up finding a movie that's going to top something else. It's hard to actually be the one best film that will actually be yeah. there. And Uncut Gems was, just wasn't it. But it was a good movie, a good performance by him. It was really good. Do you think we'll ever see peak Adam Sandler again in comedy? I want to. I want to believe. Mm -hmm. But with this Netflix deal and letting them go off the reels, do whatever he wants to do, no. I don't I see don't. it. Yeah. Uh, I hit you hit. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so either. Like, he will always be Adam Sandler. Like, he'll you'll never be able to take that away from him. But, yeah, definitely his time as box office money is, is over. Yeah. Here's another reason. You live in a different era. Do you think those movies, Happy Gamble, Billy Madison, Big Daddy, do you think they can be made today? Big Daddy? I'd say yes. Okay. Billy Gil by Billy Madison? Fuck no. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'd even throw 51st States in there. I think that one would have a hard time getting made now because of the whole creepiness of going after the girl with the short-term memory. Yeah. Right. I can see yeah. uh, controversy with that. Oh, hands down. It's, is it a right. good movie? Yes. Is it as far as sensitivity goes? It's way up there. <laughs> yeah. I'd still probably say the one of his that you could make today would be The Wedding Singer. Yeah. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. And you see, I believe that his humor is still into the 1990s humor, mm -hmm. and he hasn't transitioned into the 2020 era. Um, right. trying to find new things to actually find funny. Yeah. To you actually... think it's because he's resting too much in his laurels? Right. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, like he's, he's resting on too much in the fact that he's Adam Sandler. Oh, yeah. You know? He's living in the past of yeah. what his movies used to do. Because yeah. even Don't Mess With the Zohan was really bad. I... Didn't mind that one. As you can tell, I took that for my name on the thing here. But <laughs> you don't mess with the soda. <laughs> uh, I, didn't know that. I like aspects of don't mess with the mm -hmm. Zohan, but I didn't enjoy it as a whole. Like yeah. I laughed, but it was on the maybe on the same level as Jack and Jill, just a little bit. Not much. Okay. I'm not going to not know. Oh, only thing is, I know that the, the love guru, that movie is terrible. Oh, yeah. The love guru. But, yeah. The only thing I like from that is Celine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that movie is fucking garbage. Yeah. And what killed Mike Myers' career? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's that, what that's a guy, better. honest. I could not, I could see him not working so you know, what what i mean by that is because he is notoriously difficult on set or whatever i is can he? see him oh fuck yeah even he admits it he's an asshole on set like he's mm -hmm. uh he's very controlling about how things go because usually it's his projects right? right and i think because of that he's gonna have a hard time like making a comeback in those movies he's great in his cameos but i don't think we'll ever see like the mike myers of old again you well, know if he did austin powers for I don't you know want that. that. Well, you don't know want that? For a while I did, but you know what? I think that movie would fall into the same category as I know you like the movie, but as a Dumb and Dumber 2, where it's just like too little, too, um, it, it's too late. Okay. Yeah, maybe. See, yeah. I felt that way too, to be honest with you, man. Um, yeah. At first, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for another Austin Powers movie. Yeah. And now I'm like, it's 2020 now. And the hype for me has died. I'm, I really feel like it's too little too late. Same thing with Dumb and Dumber 2. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> well, with your, uh, agreeing with you on that one. There were some jokes that were for, some jokes that were good with Dumb yeah. and Dumber 2. But I feel like if they did an Austin Powers movie, it wouldn't be as rememberable as the other three films. No, exactly. And it's, it's one of those... I don't know a if the humor would work nowadays, and it's just like how would you how would you go about doing this? Like, I mean, you can't repeat the same jokes. No, because you have to incorporate a twenty twenty audience. So you actually yeah. have to talk like a twenty twenty audience living in a twenty twenty world. 
and try and get their slang and their lingo and everything else down to be yeah. able to let them relate to that. Yeah, and well, I, I don't, mean, I mean, I don't see Austin Powers as an old man either. Let me ask you that. I see all your points. I'm going to pull it in because it kind of saying the same thing. Did you feel that same way about Toy Story 4? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, I I wouldn't necessarily put it in the same category, but yeah, it was just like I watched it, I liked it, I didn't want it. I'm getting oh, that, that. That. Toy Story Four. Oh yeah. To be yeah. honest with you, I wouldn't mind seeing Wayne's World uh three, seeing a Wayne's yeah. World three and everything. And Wayne and, and Garth making fun of the twenty twenty music, rock music age. That would be good. And everything. Mm -hmm. Is he still yeah. on his camera? Yeah. But you know what would be funny, though? Like, they go and see this popular band that they've been fans of for years. There's this opening band that they never heard of, but we in a 2020 world have heard of. And all of a sudden, they're like, who is that? What's that noise? I haven't heard this before. And they're like, ugh. <laughs> Dave McQuire, if you're listening. Copyright it. <laughs> right. But I would like to actually see that. That would actually be a good comeback from Mike. Rather yeah, see, than that, one, mm. that one would definitely play off better. Like, don't be wrong. If he ever did make it Austin Powers for it, yes, I would watch it. But mm -hmm. it's like, I, out of the two, I would probably lean more towards a Wayne's World 3 myself. Okay, how about this? This would never happen. Never. Wayne's World and Parent 10 share the universe. That could work. It could be weird, but it could work. Yeah, it could work. Like you can incorporate the phone booth, have it sent over to, um, sent over to where Wayne and Garth are, and a mm -hmm. and everything, and do it that way if you wanted to go that route, or just have them meet up. I remember it was my grade 11 year and we played Bohemian Rhapsody and band. And for some reason, this one concert, he got different students, our director got different students to introduce the song. So I got to do Bohemian Rhapsody and you bet your ass. I said, and now the song made famous by Wayne's world. Bohemian oh, Rhapsody. Yes. <laughs> that is such an iconic song. I love it. Oh, I yeah. had banged to it. That's it's, it's iconic. It is. It really is. Yeah. And, it, right and you know, it's a hundred percent true. If it wasn't for Wayne's World, I have a there was a strong sense that maybe Queen would have been lost to history. They wouldn't be as popular as they are now. I agree. I, yeah. I really agree with this with that statement because they kind of fell in off, and then all of a sudden Wayne's World comes around. Yeah, and all of a sudden us '90s kids start adapting to it and loving it. And the next thing you know, it as a new way of introducing the world to Queen. Yeah, and because of that soundtrack, I, it put it back onto the charts. Oh. Yep. Yeah, and the, the Wayne's World music video won the MTV Music Award for Best Video for a Film. And yeah, I'm trying to find what its chart performance was. Because I, 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 I know after... Well, the song well, re yeah, it, the it reached number two again okay. after 16 years after it was released and stayed 17 weeks on the chart. Oh, and when Wayne's World came out, yeah. I really did. I like the Mike Myers cameo in a Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Yes, it, it made sense. Yeah. It, it, was it a little on the nose? Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, it made you. Yeah, you couldn't have done that without having him in there. It I, just, mean, I, I don't know if it's a hot take or not. I love that movie. Me too. Do I think it's, it's historical bullshit? 100%. I remember watching the movie and yelling at the screen, he didn't have a mustache when they recorded that song. Right. And but, you see, I was there with you, man. Yeah, like, No, it, it's a fun movie, but it's it's right. a historical garbage. It is. Because that's what you get whenever you want the bands to try and focus in on the positivities rather than negatives. Well, like, the band never broke up. No. And the movie implied they did. Right. Like when they did Live Aid, they were on tour for The Works, their album The Works, which has Radio Gaga on it. In the movie, it made it seem like they'd been broken up for a couple of years, which never happened. Actually, he actually did release a solo album. He, he did, yeah, but the band never broke yeah. up. No, they never actually fully broke yeah. up or anything like that. Yeah. They tried to make something dramatic whenever something dramatic didn't even happen. It was very paint by numbers. Right. 
I, I felt like a VH1 behind the music uh, movie. Mm. If you, if honestly, if you'd had like instead of it being Queen, if you'd have made it about like a fictional band, it probably would have worked better. Right. <laughs> but like that, is nothing, that is, I will never take anything away from Raleigh Malik's performance. Right. Ever. Right. Rami did awesome. Yeah, hundred percent deserving of the Oscar, and yeah, it wasn't completely his voice singing. It was a. Lot, I've heard rumors that they took Freddie Mercury's vocals. They took um, uh, was it Mike Mar Mark Mar Mike Martell? His mm -hmm. vocals. He's he's a sound alike Freddie Mercury, and they took Rami Malek and they mixed the three together. That's oh, what yeah. I. Heard. It worked out well. Yeah, yeah it did work um, out well. Yeah. Another thing though too is I just watched the Queen biography. With uh, matter of fact, it was on Netflix. Okay. It's called The Show Must Go On, mm -hmm. and it has Adam Lambert as the front, as the... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and, I didn't see it on my feed. Oop. <laughs> but, you know, I like the fact that Adam's like, I do not want to take anything away from Freddy, because I mm -hmm. can't be Freddy. I can Nobody. be Adam. And that's what the Queen loved about him. They respected yeah. Adam for that. But what I liked about the documentary the most was, you know how we got introduced to Queen through... Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody with Wayne's World. Mm -hmm. They had to find a way to be reintroduced again to the world in a 2020 world where nobody really has heard of Queen before in this new age that much. So with Adam Lambert being out in front and center and them doing it, they managed to go ahead mm -hmm. and recapture Queen all over again as well. Yeah for a 2020 culture, which is something I appreciate. You know, after Freddie died, they could have continued and a great, great choice to take, not replace Freddie, but to take over would have been George Michael. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe me, go watch George Michael uh, singing somebody to love from the Freddie Mercury tribute concert. He okay. commands the audience in that. Like it's, it's spellbinding to see, Everybody in the audience, a hundred thousand plus people just clapping along. It's just I will send okay. it in the chat. It's it's wow. Do, because I never saw that before. So yeah. that's my uh whenever I'm like really sick that I, I pop in the Freddie Mercury Blu-ray tribute concert okay. Blu-ray and watch it. Think about it, 1992. You have Def Leppard in their prime, you've got Metallica in their prime, Extreme in their prime, you've got uh Guns and Roses at the height of their powers, you've got Elton John, you've got David Bowie, you've got Annie Lennox, you've got Liza Minnelli, you've got like Roger Daltrey, like you've got the who's who of music. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's long, but it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, we this is actually we've actually gone over our hours. This is actually our longest episode. Wow. Which, that's well, you know, that's what happens when you're having a good discussion yeah, and like yeah. can't yeah. go wrong with that salad. You I know, don't end up with this, guys. Yeah. Yeah. It, th th that's what I love about the show. It's just the conversation just takes over and you forget about what time it is. Exactly. Yeah. So John, where can everybody find you? Okay, so everybody can find me at Movie Lovers, TV Lovers Unite on Facebook, Instagram. You can also find me on Twitter at Movie Lovers Unit because they I have because they only allow me so many characters. So it's just oh. Movie Lovers Unit <laughs> instead. And then of course you can re reach me at John DiGorio8 on Twitter. We also have, of course, a GoFundMe page if you guys want to go ahead and donate. We have another GoFundMe thing which is called www. Uh, buymeacoffee.com slash movie lovers. So you guys can go in and get me jacked up on some coffee, donate towards the show that way. You got, we also have a website called movieloversunite.com. And we just started up a Patreon. As a matter of fact, we're doing classic movies for a $5 tier or $10 tier. And basically that's your 1950s movies and also your 90s movies. And then for a $10 tier, we're doing documentary series. And we're just discussing maybe one episode and then just shooing it in that way, letting somebody decide for themselves that they want to go ahead and watch that documentary or not. Then, of course, oh, right on. Yeah. And then on the another one, though, too, we actually have a twenty dollar tier where you can get both of those for twenty dollars and also get a free digital copy of a movie. Oh, that's cool. So, so we're doing that. So I'm excited. We just started the Patreon. It's something new, something fresh. Mm -hmm. I like to actually keep things a little bit uh, fresh and everything. So that's where everybody can actually reach me on. 
Right on. And everybody, yeah, go and uh, sign up for John's Patreon. I've listened to a few episodes of his show because my friend Lou is on there quite a bit. And it's, it's yeah. pretty good stuff. Definitely check Thank it out. You, man. Yeah. And what about you, Ben? You can find me at Twitter at Ben Raider 2. You can find me every Thursday with Matt here, right here on Tune in the Breeze. Mm-hmm. You can also find me on Get Ready again with Matt every Sunday. Um, and uh, Matt Schmordown every Saturday. And this week we're on part of that special thought. We're actually the um, Every Schmordown Reactor show is a part of. And Matt Schmordown will be on Sunday at 8 in the morning, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And you could actually also find me on there uh, right before Ben with my boys from Schmoves of the North. Um, so basically, if, for those who don't know, it is a 25-hour live stream with uh, a fundraiser with the money. If I'm not mistaken, is it going to it's going to pediatric ca- cancer, isn't it? It's in Smith's name, but I heard it was going to pediatric cancer. I might I might be mistaken. Uh, I'm gonna know. I, I, I just know it's a fundraiser for uh, for cancer, but definitely check it out. You're gonna have the called action guys. You're gonna have the action guys themselves. The movie guys are gonna be making an appearance. Um, you're gonna have uh, late night with uh, uh, Gucci and Kaiser is on there. It's a whole slew of, of people. It's for a great cause. Uh, we're all showing our support for for Kevin Smith because you know the dude's awesome. I've had the chance to talk to him. I love the guy. He's he's good shit. Um, he deserves to keep going. Like he said, he wants to see his daughter walk down the aisle. So you know, it's our way of showing where we've we've got his back. We've got his six on this. Yeah. So, and for me, you can find me as it says right above my head at soda underscore the underscore sax man. Um, like Ben also said, you can find me at guns. Yeah. That was me commenting on your girlfriend's post about best generation of rock. hundred percent. Not going to lie. I'm a big, cool. like I said, big kiss fan. Um, but yeah, no, you can find me over on Thursdays doing this, shooting the breeze with Ben. You can also find me on Sundays on get sweaty with Ben, where we break down the week and, you know, movie talk, a little bit of sports, maybe some schmo down. And then we usually end up with a top five. This week's top five is top five historical movies. So that's going to be fun because there's a lot of good ones out there. And also every week you can find me over my other channel, Schmoes of the North with my friends, where we break down the week in uh, Schmodown news. And once in a while we do interview people involved in the Schmodown community in one way or another. Our latest one was with Adam Witt and Eric Zipper, the Misfits. Uh, Great time. We played the newlywed game with them. Definitely check that out. Yeah. And so once again, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, it's been a great time. John, thank you for joining us. I'll uh, we'll definitely have to have you back on again. Thank you, man. I, I did yeah. enjoy this. This is great. You're more than welcome on my show as well. So Damn right. Is, all right. Okay. So, yes, on behalf of myself and Ben, we would like to say good evening and uh, take care, everybody. And don't and forget. Yes,